Today on the Union Road Wine Trail, we're happy to have had an interview with one of the owners of Malloy O'Neill, one of the older wineries in the Paso Robles area. Now he holds a degree in both biochemistry and fermentation science, which makes him quite an expert in the area and the soil and condition and the growing region of the Paso Robles area. One of the things that we do very well here, and my nickname is, I've been called the mad scientist before because I went to UC Davis and I have a degree in biochemistry and fermentation science, and I like to experiment. I like to make a lot of different wines a year, and I like to just figure out what works with each varietal. I do a lot of different small scale experiments, and um, I make 36 different wines a year. Um, which is kind of a strange model, but it works well because all my lot sizes are very small, 200 cases or under uh, size. And I do have a few smaller, I mean, larger lots, but not too many. Um, I have seven different cabs, six different Syrahs, about 10 blends, consisting of about three or four Italian blends, a couple French blends, some vineyard blends. Um, I, I do a lot of different stuff. Um, some of the stranger varietals we have, I've worked with Alianico, I've worked with, uh, we have a Primitivo vineyard over there on the west side. Um, I have a kind of an obscure varietal called the Grind. This is a northern Italian kind of petite Syrah equivalent that's grown in the Alto Adige region in uh, northern Italy. It's the border region with uh, Switzerland and, um, and uh, Austria. And it basically is that it's the Tyrolean Alps region where this is a mountain grape that they uh, they used to blend primarily into their super Tuscans or blends of that region. Um, it's a dark style pizza raw. They also make uh, a rosé out of it called uh, Lagrange Le, Le, Le Risotto, and that wine is um, is kind of just an aperitif wine that they that they, that they make with this varietal, but. Here in Paso Robles, I think there's only 11 acres planted of it, and it uh, originally came in um, to French Camp over here, and, um, and some of the local wineries have been making it and, and had really good success with it. It's an interesting variety because it's different than what we're normally used to with the Caps and the Merlots and Syrahs. And it's just, um, it's, it's kind of a unique variety in that it has this kind of steely, um, flinty pencil lead type of character that is you'd see like in a Chardonnay, but this is in a red wine, so it just it gives it this unique kind of twist that is you don't see that often. I, I really, really like it. It's uh, right here. This is a uh, Le Brine, and we just planted two acres here of it, and right here in front of the tasting room, and it should get our first crop. This year would be nice. Um, we had a bad frost last year, so I had a little bit of damage, and I'm, I'm waiting to see what the final crop load is going to look like. But I should get a couple barrels out of it, so stay tuned for that. Um, we have Pinot Noir, we grow Merlot. I have three different Zins. I've got Petite Syrah, which I absolutely love. That's kind of our flagship. I call this one liquid meat. It's uh, just huge. It's uh, meaty and uh, dark and extracted. It looks like uh, uh, squid ink and motor oil. I know that doesn't sound very appetizing, but as a winemaker, that's what I look for. I want it big and dark and juicy and just concentrated. That's what I love. Uh, that's what my customers go for. That's kind of the niche that I have here and that which people come to the wine meal is because they know they're not going to get the mass-produced supermarket style tank wine. They're going to get handcrafted vegetable. You look at my hands during harvest and you can tell that this is handcrafted wine because white, everything's black until about January. And, um, and I really love to work with those dark varietals like Petit Frigo, Petit Syrah, Le Brian. And I use them for blending. I make their own wines. I just have a lot of fun kind of doing a lot of different experiments. And everything to me is always like a learning experience. I do what works with certain varietals, and I don't do what I, if it doesn't work, I'll use it for some blending, or I'll, I'll always find some use for whatever experiment I was doing. 
um, but it really kind of boils down the formula into what you know what you need to do to get the highest quality grapes there. And my first three or four years, I have a matrix of just like 50 different experiments that I can tap off of to see what I want to do for whatever year it is. So I kind of can, uh, can look at the years be before and look at the experiments I did and use them to figure out what I want to do in the future. And, um, and, and I include our wine club members and all my customers in that, in those decisions. I will be blending out there in the winery and I'll come out here with customers and I'll say, what do you think? Do you like this one or this one better? And I'm serious and I listen to what they have to say because I know as a winemaker what I like, but that's not what the customers are liking and that's not what they buy. So I, I need all the feedback from the industry people, from other winemakers, from the customers. And the customers love it when you include them like that. And that's what I'm talking about with like the the one-on-one -on -one customer service. They really talk about that. They like it. They want that personal experience and that's what they're coming here for and that's what you're going to get in Paso Robles pretty much. It's just really down to earth, mom and pop, have lunch with me, spend the, you know, some of the, some, sometimes during the week here, there's not a whole lot of customers and if you come in at the right time, you get me all day and we'll have lunch and we'll, you know, uh, talk about the winery and they go home very happy. So that's what you have to look forward to. I just wanted to, before I leave, just mention real quick about the Union Road Wine Trail. We are a group of about uh, 14 wineries um, on this road, starting from Tobin James and ending down there by Barney Shorts Park, um, that are kind of formed a small little group to keep people over here. And this can make an entire day trip. The good thing about it is that if you do see this video on YouTube, come to Malloy O'Neill, tell us that you saw it on YouTube. Not only will we give you a free tasting here, but we will give you 10% off on everything you buy. Um, and as well as the rest of the 14 wineries on the Union Road Wine Trail, you can pick up one of these while you're here. We'll give it to you. It has a map on the back, and it shows all the, the different wineries on the trail and where they are. And, um, and you're going to get 10% off and free tasting at all of them. So you're going to save money right there with your group. And you can get a hotel room right across the street, so you're five minutes away. There's no reason not to come here. And you're going to have a good experience. I know that. Um, I try to give my customers the best experience every time for everybody, no matter what. I know that they're here for vacation and they're looking for a good time. And I'm going to give it to them. And I know I've been to every single winery on this list, and they're all good, and they're all going to do the same thing that I'm going to do. So there's no reason not to come here and check it out. Eastside Castle Rubbles is where it's at, and we have some really great up-and-coming new wineries, and we've got a lot of good winemakers, and it's worth checking out. So come out, and you're going to save money. It's a win-win for everyone. So come on out and check out the Union Road Wine Trail. You will find Malloy O'Neill's right in about the middle of the Union Road Wine Trail. And when you're there, stop in and say hello, and you'll receive a map of the Union Road and free wine tasting at all the wineries along the Union Road, plus a discount on all the wine you purchase when you're on the Union Road.